Are you looking to provide parents with the best baby product in the market? Look no further because today we are talking about how to start this thriving baby shop business in the market. If it's your first time in my channel, Welcome, welcome, welcome. Don't forget to subscribe, like, share, and comment. If you're a returning viewer, thank you for the support. I really appreciate you. And today, guys, I want to give out a shout out to Lydia Kairu, who requested this specific video. Thank you for the support. Yes, let's get into it. When you're looking to start a business, there are key main points that you need to consider. The first one is the market research. You have to do a very good market research. The second one is you need to have a business plan. Then the that one is you need to consider the location where you're going to set up your business. Number four, you need to know the legal considerations of that area. Number five is the competition. Is there a competition for that? Uh, for that kind of a business in that area. Number six, you need to know if you have enough capital. Number seven is how are you going to do the marketing for this specific business? Number eight, which I think it's one of the most uh, overlooked uh, point is the challenges that you're going to face when you're doing this business and also the solutions and how to solve these kind of challenges when they come and the last one is will you be able to scale up the business scaling up i mean is there um, a possibility of this business expanding in the future let's talk about the market research for baby shop business doing your market research these are things that you should consider number one is the demographic um, by the demographic i mean the income level of that area, the population, is there like a big population in that area? And also, is it urban or rural area? Number two, when you're doing market research, you need to consider consumer preferences. By this, I mean the product preferences of this um, type of population that where you, of where you want to set up your business. You need to look at their cultural considerations. You, you also need to check the health and safety concerns. Number three is the competitive analysis. You need to research the existing baby shops in that area, the online, their online presence, and also identify a gap in between of that market. Another key point is the regulatory environment. You have to look for the licenses and requirements from the government before you start your business. This could be local regulations. And also if you, you plan to import, you have also to check the importation regulations number five is the economic outlook you have to check for inflation you have to look for economic stability and also decide whether is it the right time to start your business or should you wait number six is technological landscape you have to check how is the um, technology affecting this kind of business is it digital marketing that is working much better or is it um, the old-fashioned way you have to consider this thing and the last point when you're doing a market research is to consider if there are suppliers. Where will you get your supplies from? If you want to check out a business plan for this specific business, I'm going to attach um, a picture or a video, a small video. You can copy, you can take a picture or you can screenshot depending on what you're using. And then you can go and fill in the details as you feel fit for you talk about the licenses that you need for this specific business number one is business registration you have to register every other business that you need to start number two is the trade license number three is single business permit number four is the health certificate number five is fire safety certificate if you're planning to import you also need the import license Another license that is not so important but you may feel like you want to include is the trademark certificate which can cost you from around 30,000 to 100,000. Let's talk about the location. Like how are you going to know this is the best place to start a baby shop business? One is the population density. You have to look for places where there is like a high population especially of expectant mothers or young people who are growing up. That is the best place to start your business income levels i mean depending on the type of clothes that you want to sell is it um second hand is it um new clothes if it's new clothes then you need to look for people with a, a little bit higher income maybe middle and earning classes class or 
maybe the higher earning and if you want to mix your shop with the um, new clothes and second hand clothes then you need to look for maybe the low income um, population and middle middle class but if you want to totally focus on the um, second hand then definitely you have to go with the um, middle income and the low income population when you're looking for location make sure you get a shop where there's a lot of food traffic and accessibility such as busy commercial areas maybe a shopping center or a market or maybe close to the bus stop another thing you need to to consider when you're looking for location is the competitive market in that area like, well some competition may look like um they're making that market very viable void areas with um, oversaturated same type of business like that that area has a lot of baby shops that is not a healthy competition but if it's just one or two then it means people are saying like that area has a good market for a baby shop also you might want to consider the parking availability and um you know space for uh, parents with strollers that is especially when you're looking for high income um population or middle class uh, population they might come with their vehicles and they need somewhere to park so you need to look for all these um things you need to consider all these factors when you're looking for a location and one thing we cannot forget about is security and safety of your business also your security as a person because at the end of the day you might be the last person or the last business to close does that mean when you're going home are you safe you might be the first people the first business to open in the morning so that you can get all this traffic when people are going to work and when people are coming back from work you see so you need to consider is your business safe and you yourself will you be safe in this weird hours let's talk about the cost when you're starting a business depending on your capital or how much you have saved you want to minimize cost as much as you can cuz business takes time to pick up so you need as much money saved aside to support your business as you can so when it comes to location you need to check the cost of the premises how much is going to cost you um for rent if so the operating expenses by this i mean water bills um electricity bills and you need to consider the minimum expenses possible so by the end of the day the capital you had saved at least you have some money to cushion your business for at least 6 months to a year or even more if possible i think when you're starting um a baby shop business you can start as low as 20000 kenya shillings you can just go to gikomba get a bill of around 20000 or 15000 and above and then you can come and sell these things online that is if you don't have money to start your own shop but then if you have money to start your own shop you can go up to like 250000 you should have like an excellent shop like a really beautiful shop because the licenses are not too costly so if you try to mix up second hand clothes and new clothes and also toys and all other uh, baby products then with 250000 you should have like a really beautiful shop there is one point that most business owners don't consider really and this is the inventory and that is where people most people go wrong and you end up closing your business because you did not manage your inventory well so you did not make return your money and you're not able to sustain your business here are some of the tips when it comes to inventory management number 1 categorize your product organize your inventory into categories such as there is the clothing side there is the feeding side there is the toy side this makes it easy for you to track your stock levels number 2 is set per levels by this i mean determine the minimum stock levels that you need for each product this will help you ensure that you always have enough inventory on hand to meet customer demand without overstocking Number 3 is implement fast in fast out method. If you rotate your inventory based on the FIFO method, which I mean fast in fast out method, 
this will help you ensure that all stock is sold before the new stock that's way you don't have like um dead stock because you have more old stock than new stock number four is regular stock audits i don't think small business do this but the big business they do stock audit there's something we call internal audits and external audits but when you're just starting and your business is small you can just do your regular stock audits the internal one this will help you reconcile physical inventory with recorded inventory levels also it will help you identify discrepancies and address any issue promptly as soon as possible number five you have to utilize inventory management software it will help you track your inventory it will help you monitor your stock levels in real time it will also help you generate reports uh, for informed future decisions like you will know what is moving too fast what is moving too slow what is missing what you should change what you should add when it comes to inventory management you also need to have a supplier relationship management you need to build strong relationship with your suppliers through effective communication timely payments and also negotiate for favorable terms you can also even get to a point where you can get goods on credit because they know if they give you goods on credit you can pay on time they don't have to remind you if you don't have an idea of any software for inventory management take a screenshot of this type of softwares but if you feel like they are more simpler ones that you think they are working for you or someone you know you can leave a comment to tell us more about it there's no business without good marketing especially with this age and era you cannot just open a business and wait for people to come in or do marketing with word of mouth and it works perfectly there are a lot of things you need to consider and here are some of the tips one of the main marketing strategy that is working for most people right now is social media marketing i cannot insist enough on this especially on tiktok people are selling you at one point you have been scrolling through tiktok you have seen people on live selling clothes you have to utilize that you have to open an instagram page you have to open a facebook page and then from there you just post your best product what do you think could sell more if facebook is selling once is more or feeding bottles more post more of that do videos do reels they will help your business a big deal two is local partnership and collaborations you can get uh, influencers who have um you can get influencers who have kids send them some few clothes let them post on their page let them give you a shout out and then from this you're going to get some clients and then there is this marketing strategy that never fails and also it never it's never outdated and it's word of mouth you have to tell your friends to tell their friends you have to tell your family you have to tell everyone you meet tell strangers tell everyone post on your whatsapp offer excellent customer service make your customers feel like they had a personalized um shopping experience at your shop encourage your customers to do a word of mouth referral to their friends and friends of friends to their family you know you can also come up with programs where when a customer refers you to their family or to a friend they get an incentive maybe a vest or maybe just something that is not worth too much but to them it feels like an appreciation from you also encourage your customer to read reviews on these pages if they bought a, um anything from your page encourage them to leave you a review because when people are going to buy something from uh, this online platform they need to see um past experiences of past customers from your shop and also one thing that i forgot when you're doing social media marketing make sure you have a nice website when you get there do that website and make it like you know very attractive it will help you a lot also don't forget to respond to your comments however small it looks even if it's just thank you I had a good experience make sure you respond it's called community engagement there are things or events that are happening in your area especially where children are children are involved make sure you attend 
if it's charity events, if it's people visiting children's homes, it's people visiting schools, go with them. That way you'll find your clients there and they will help you also market yourself. Number five is cost effective and advertising. Whether you're advertising on the newspaper, whether you're advertising on someone's YouTube channel, get the most cost effective way of advertising for your business. There's one more point that I don't want to go too much into details, but it's scaling up your business. Once you start your business and it start picking and it's doing well, always save an, a portion of amount where you know that this is um, amount to open another business somewhere. That is what we mean by scaling up. Like your your business is growing or probably not even opening a different branch. It could be probably expanding your business you know it's growing from this having baby clothes to having toys last and not least the challenges that you will face in this type of business one is seasonal demand fluctuation this i mean seasonal demand variation especially uh, during holidays or special events you will find you have a lot of cash flow then on some months you don't have which will uh, have um, an imbalance in your inventory. The solution to this problem is having an inventory system. As I said, when you have a, like a really good inventory system, you're able to monitor months where you could sell too much and months where you sell too little. So that when it comes to certain months, you know you don't have to overstock. And then when it comes to some months, you know probably over the holidays, you have to increase your inventory. That way you're able to cater for demand and also at the end of the day, you don't have a lot of dead stock. One challenge in this business is intense competition. There are a lot of baby shops around. Even supermarkets have brought competition in this market, unfortunately. But then there's a solution to every problem. And th by this, I mean for competition, you can plan to offer personalized customer experience. When a customer leaves your shop, they feel like they have the been attended to completely one of the best business advice i ever got is a business deal is never closed in the conference room it is closed at the parking lot so you approach your customer the moment they enter your shop or maybe they have not entered but the reception they will get it will determine how much you are going to spend in your shop it is going to determine whether they are going to refer your business it's going to determine whether they are going to come back you know so the, the moment they get to your shop, you have to give them the best customer experience. And then also you can deal with competition by offering unique products. So attending these community activities makes people feel like you have included them in your own space. They feel like they are a part of your business. So they are able to prefer coming to your shop than going to any other shop. The third challenge I was talking about is the rising operational cost. There is increase in rent, there is increase in electricity bills, there is increase in water bills. This can put pressure on inventory and also your pricing margins. The solution to this problem is back to the supplier. You have to negotiate your prices, you have to negotiate for bonuses, for discounts, and also cut costs where necessary. If your shop has good lighting and you don't need um, to have all the bulbs on during the day, do that and i mean you can just look for tiny tiny little things the little you save here and there at the end of the day it be a lot sema haba na haba ujaza kibaba i want to talk about is customer service issue i mean not all customers you will find that are good at the end of the day your services cannot change it has to be top notch to every customer whether a customer is um friendly or not rude or not nice or not you know you your services have to remain constant always train your staff how to handle customers but i think when it comes to staff they will treat customers how you treat them so when it comes to training your staff you have to learn how to handle your staff first so that they be able to handle customers well. And before we close this video, let's talk about one success story. If you have not watched videos about Nela Baby Shop, where it started, how it has grown, now they have branches in all the big um, cities in Kenya. 
please watch it. The woman has such a story on how she started her business. It has grew. In this economy where everyone is complaining business is not doing so well, they are still operating, they are still doing well. If you need to set, set up a baby shop, you don't know where to start, you can check that out. Then good luck in starting this business, guys. If you like this video, please subscribe, hit the like button, leave a comment. And until next time, goodbye.